Hey and welcome to a new tutorial video here on this channel. Today I show you how you can use my Blockbench to AdventureCraft Converter Tool. You wanna make sure to always select a generic model. Maybe I'll try to implement those options as well later on down the road. I'll let you know. Let's name it tutorial um, AdventureCraft. <clears throat> Here it's important in this dialog to choose the box UV, the texture size, uh, I'd like to choose one, 128 by 128 because uh, yeah, it's giving me a lot of space and yeah, image files aren't that huge, so it should be fine. N here, which means the north direction, so this is the way your model should face. Um, <clears throat> it will also be uh, the same in AdventureCraft. There are some things which are also not yet supported. So here, for example, the Add Mesh button is not supported. We need to use the cubes and the groups. So let's create a cube. And as you can see here in this 3D space, um, we have this little cube. I can change its position in the 3D space. Also adjust the size. So let's make a simple Minecraft block for now. 16 by 16 by 16. Um, please make sure to always uh, select whole numbers as sizes. So, uh, for example, 7.5 will work in Blockbench, but not in AdventureCraft. So, um, yeah, please be aware to choose uh, proper sizes here. The positions, on the other hand, don't matter, so you can do something like this. Please also make sure to not use the inflate option since it's also not supported yet. It's on my list to make it compatible, but as of right now, you shouldn't use it. With the pivot point, you can shift your rotation. So right now it's in the center, so 0, 0, 0 means this point here. And when I do now a rotation, then you can see it's spinning around this point here. If I now click the center pivot point, it moves inside the cube in the center of my model or in this cube. And when I now rotate it, as you can see, it now rotates around itself. So this is pretty useful when you do stuff like arms and so on, where you need to shift the pivot point a bit. Next off, you see on the top left our UV overlay, which is a bit out of the texture. So what you want to do, just move it inside or click it once and then it should move by itself here. Then you can position it uh, for your texturing later on. I'd like to put mine here in the top left. You can, uh, of course, change the values from here with these tools here. This is uh, no problem, and as you can see, when I resize it, all, uh, obviously the UV overlay changes as well. Um, yeah, with the knife tool you can create separate models or like, split your model. For example, when I now move this part here to the left, then you can see, okay, we have like two pieces now. And very important, now you see our UV mode changed to faces, so we got each face here. This won't work in AdventureCraft, so we have to right-click it and select the box UV mode again for both parts now. And now you're good to go. Now we have our two parts in the box UV layout. This is really important. It will otherwise destroy your model. Okay, let's create our texture. We can either select or not select anything, then it will just apply to every cube we have, or we select one cube, create a texture, let's uh, name it cube one. And then this one gets also a new texture and we name it cube 2. Next off we have the add group which creates bones. I know it's a bit confusing but you can imagine it's like a rig for an animation or just a bone in a human body so to say. So for example when I move my leg my foot moves along you know so these are in a bone group. If we put it here select the bone we can rotate those two and also change the pivot point accordingly. And um, a neat thing is that we can um, yeah, basically nest that as deep as we want. You can have like different stuff happening later on in the animation. I will show it then. When naming these things, you can double click it and name it test and test two, for example. Okay, let's get to the next tab. Yeah, color in, paint, as it says, our textures. So we need to select here on our right side our cubes, and then we can just uh, use the paintbrush, the paint bucket. This one is pretty nice because uh, it has different modes. So face will obviously just color in one face. Let's select a different color so I can show it better. Element will color in the whole element, and yeah, selected elements, connect the colors and so on. You can do that. 
eraser will just erase one side of a face. So as you can see, now I can look inside my little cube here. Color picker will let me pick my color. And yeah, draw shape will let me draw shapes. So I can here draw circles, for example, on the side, pixel circles or squares, gradients, of course, and so on. So this should work. Um, no problem with this. Move layers, I'm actually not sure how it would behave with different layers. I've not tested this, but yeah, le let me know. <laughs> Good point uh, when you find any bugs for the tool or my website in general, because it's like in an early publishing state. Please make sure to let me know either on Discord, here in the comment section, or of course on the website itself, where I have this neat and little bug and features request page. So yeah, that would mean a lot. <laughs> All right, we can play around with it, do stuff and have multiple textures. Um, you can also reassign it. For example, if you right click it and then hit the texture one, you can choose the other texture here, for example. So it's uh, both are using the same one. We are in the last tab, the animation tab. Um, here you can see only the bones. So no standalone cube or a cube in general will be shown here. So that's why it's important to use these and have it nicely nested, so to say. And yeah, we need to add a new animation. We call this one idle. Um, <clears throat> we have three loop modes. So play once will play the animation and reset back to the first keyframe. So to the start of the animation, hold on last frame will do the same, but uh, stays at the end of the animation and loop will obviously loop and play it uh, all over again. We can tick the override button and change the snapping from 24 to 20, which means um, basically because of Adventure Craft, which runs 20 ticks per second, the animation will look a bit smoother, although 24 is also just fine. You won't even notice, I think. All right, now we have our idle animation, then we can click on one component. Let's open both. And now we have these three values. Right now you can animate the rotation, position and scale. And yes, here in the animation tab, the scale is supported. So yeah, maybe <laughs> the inflation uh, setting from the start is not that hard to implement in my tool. Okay, um, let's click the plus icon. You can either click the plus icon here on the timeline, drag around, or if you're somewhere on a point and then for example, hit select the move, then it will automatically create a keyframe. So let's do a little bit of this. So we have um, position zero. All right, uh, our rotation should here be, I don't know, like this. Yeah, now let's do a little bit of a loop since it's an idle animation. So in total, three second animation loop. And we have this one, where it just uh, yeah, moves back the same way. And yeah, you can play around with it, have different timings and stuff like this. Looks a bit funky, of course. Now the same can be done for the second one. So for example, we could double the size here of this element. We can position it. And important note here, it will move relatively to the current acceleration of the parent element. So as you can see, now it's looking really funky because this one moves to one position and the other one has also movement. So yeah, as you can see, because of this crazy movement, uh, this one, yeah, is going pretty crazy right now or escalating pretty crazy. I'm not sure about these settings actually. So just leave it as is for now. All right, and when you're done, you can just hit the file and then save project or control S. Then it saves also the textures and the blockbench model. All right, now we can jump in game. I will show you a little time lapse of uh, another one because this one looks ugly. <laughs> I want to show you a like proper small model. So yeah.
Once you're happy with this, then you can go on my website and then on the AC converter page, I will link it in the description, there's this how-to video you are watching right now. And then you basically select your tutorial model, upload it, convert it and download it. Um, this one will not be saved on the server just for the conversion, it will delete it afterwards um, as it states here. However, when you want to use the post um, functionality, those obviously will store it and then you have to create an account. But other than that, you don't need an account to use the converter. But uh, you know, it would mean a lot for me if you also um, share your assets and maybe have guides and stuff like that here or even raid the other maps which are currently on the official AC website. It's still uh, like work in progress, you know, so um, yeah. Expect things to change here. Okay, so we have this tutorial mob zip now. When you op uh, open it, you have the textures folder with the uh, with our test or even multiple textures attached to it. Then our model JS and then the entity. Basically everything you need. So we just extract it here. Okay, and as you can see, there's our test. And in the entities, it says now uh, that we have all other scripts that we don't have. I plan on basically providing you um, some basics for this ones so that you have um, like a basic on dev script, a basic on interaction script and so on. Um, but right now all you get is the uncreated script. <coughs> so in order to actually play the animations you need to create one yourself, the tutorial mob JS. We do this now. So we have this on update script and our normal one. Open it with a coding tool of your choice or editor of your choice. For me, this is VS Code. Uh, let me put it side to side. So yeah, this is the one we've just created with the tool. There you can see uh, it has the text, test texture. Also make sure uh, you have this non-PNG in the place where your textures are because um, it will hide the default yeah, Minecraft Steve skin, basically. Uh, let me actually uh, comment it out so you can see what it looks like without. And there you have all the definition of the boxes you just did, created, and then or two animations here as well. So idle animation and impact, and then some helper functions. Uh, you need, uh, you don't need to do those, uh, so ignore these. Um, what's important are the animation functions, basically. This you can also ignore. So basically for the animation idle we have the control over the tick, loop, length and is playing state and reset interrupted. So um, tick is basically um, how far the animation has been progressed. So for example, if our animation goes one second, it is equal to 20 ticks because AdventureCraft runs with 20 ticks per second. So if the tick is 10, the animation is halfway done. If it's only 20 ticks long, loop is the loop mode. So what you selected in block bench, um, if it should hold on the last frame or loop, length is the animation length, is playing says or is a boolean, so you can check if the animation is still going. And reset interrupted is, for example, when you have multiple animations and uh, the animation which is currently playing is getting reset, uh, uh, sorry, is getting interrupted by another animation, then you um, can either continue the animation afterwards, so where it left is being left off, or what you can do is um, just have it play from start. So yeah, it's uh, true by default, so it will always go from the first uh, tick again, like from the start, but you can change this if you want. And here in our unupdate script, we now want to play this idle animation. So we do animation dot idle, uh, sorry, <laughs> idle dot play, because we want to hit the play function. The play function is here, um, play function. So you don't have to understand this, but um, basically you have like uh, some functions you can do. Reset function, reset frame function. So the difference is basically that the reset function also resets the model to the start position and this only resets the animation. Uh, in it is the initializing function. So this sets the length, the loop, uh, mode and stuff like that. And the play function is the most important one. So if it's not playing, we initialize it and then we start the animation. And this is our logic for the animation. Yeah, same with the interruption. So what we do here is we just play the idle animation and then we can open AdventureCraft. Okay, now select the spawner. Um, this is our tutorial mob. It's now here, spawn on trigger and bump. And as you can see now, this is our model, which plays the idle animation. But we have this Steve, this ugly Steve. 
because this is basically the hitbox. So um, maybe I will also change my tool or the converter tool so it will also auto-generate like this empty non-file. This is just a transparent um, pixel basically. It's I think one by one. Yeah, it's just one pixel which is empty and uh, yeah, it will just hide it. So let's uncomment it, this one. So this will hide it. Yeah, and as you can see, this is now our box with playing the idle animation. It just works like that. Uh, you can also hide this um, shadow here because uh, this is another texture and it doesn't make really sense for custom ops, but yeah, this is a different thing. Or maybe you can watch my assets tutorial. I think I also went through this texture here. And yeah, as you can see, uh, since we have now on a tagged state script, it will throw this error. Let's create it now so I can show you something. Uh, let's copy this and then rename this one to on the tagged. So I've just <clears throat> defined a quick boolean here. Let has being hit equals false. Please make sure to always put let before or even var because um, if not then this variable will be the same for all custom mobs you spawn. So for example when one mob has been hit then everyone will be hit. So the let will leave it as a local per entity value so to say. And I've prepared something here in my on update script. So if not being hit it should play the idle animation. And if it has been hit, then the impact animation should play. And on the on attack script I've just created, we just update the boolean to true. And this one is a general one because uh, the custom mobs normally have like the knockback that you know from other Minecraft vanilla mobs and also had, have this ugly hit sound. So yeah, when you put a simple false at the end of the script, it will prevent that. And this is how it looks in game. So this is it. I can show you a different mob. Uh, just which I did as, as a test. If you want, you can um, download it on the website as well. It's the deco scrub model. So, uh, it won't have the sounds, obviously, because uh, Nintendo would sue me, probably, when they find out. So, you have to look for those sounds as well. But basically, yeah, this is deco scrub, which can hurt me, but it can also block it. And then you can see, um, like, the different animations, for example. or the different animation switches, how you can do it potentially. You can also interact with it and you know, not hit it with a sword and stuff like that. You can just download it and uh, try to see how I did it within Blockbench. So yeah, this is the end of the video. Thanks for watching and yeah, check out the tool. I hope it helps you. I hope you like it and uh, yeah, feel free to check out the other socials, my website of course, and let me know what you want to see next.